Hey guys, so today I'm doing some art inspired by Studio Ghibli art. That was not my original intent. When I set out to do this video, I was just flipping through a bunch of different art books trying to find some inspiration because all I knew is I wanted to do some kind of scenery, some kind of landscape. Well, with a character in it, but mostly focusing on the setting. And I ended up just falling in love with some art and some Studio Ghibli art books. So I'll show you what I ended up choosing. Okay, so first I was looking through the Howl's Moving Castle book and there's so much great stuff in here. What I love about the Ghibli art books is they're so thick. There's just so much art in them compared to American animation studios. It's just great. Oh, there's so much to look at. And this really caught my eye right here. These women in their dresses and how we're seeing them from behind. That really spoke out to me because I knew I wanted to do some kind of landscape scenery art and I thought that would be the perfect way to include a person is have them from behind like that and I just love the look of the dresses and the hats and I wanted to do something like that and then in the Kiki's delivery service book I came across this art right here the one on the bottom of the page stunning just really stood out to me I loved the combination of land and water in that and so I ended up highly, highly referencing these. It's almost a study. I did change it up to make it my own, but it's very heavily influenced as you will see. It's like, oh, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but make sure to change it up a little bit. So that's me crediting my sources. <laughs> I'm using some Arches watercolor paper and I taped it down to a wooden board using some masking tape and then went in and started sketching. I don't have a sketch underneath that I'm tracing. I'm kind of just going for it, but I did do a super super, super rough sketch digitally just to plan it all out. And that's what I used as reference for this. Then I also had the Kiki's Delivery Service book propped up on the desk so I could look at it and reference that for the colors and stuff like that. So here I'm applying some masking fluid. Ugh, all my masking fluid is so old. And I had this Winsor & Newton stuff, which was great. And that stuff you have to apply with a brush because it just comes in a little jar. But one time it got knocked over in the drawer I was storing it in and it spilt even though the lid was on it all leaked out and so I had to just throw it out because it was empty and I kind of forgot about that when I went to go get my masking fluid today and so I'm using this stuff here which is neat because it has a fine tip applicator but it's it's also just very old and so I wasn't sure how well it was gonna work I haven't actually used this blue one before I don't think I had a yellow one like the packaging was yellow and I've used that one a few times but this one I hadn't but I thought you know what this is all I have I'm just gonna go for it I didn't want to use masking film because that involves you using a knife to cut through the film and I'm really bad at that and I end up cutting into my art a little bit and so I just thought I'll use the fluid why not because <laughs> the plan was for this to be a watercolor illustration and a marker illustration like combine both but it ended up being almost exclusively watercolor with a bit of gouache that's why I'm masking off areas because I knew for coloring the green water, or the green water, the blue water and the green land, I would need to just do very large strokes. And I thought, okay, let's, let's mask off some areas. But for the tree and the girl here, I didn't fully color them in with the masking fluid because I figured why, like I don't need to fully fill that in. I can just go right up to it when I'm painting. Yeah, mistakes were made because I ended, up, <laughs> I ended up painting in those areas. So I showed a quick shot of the paints I'm using. They're my Schmincke watercolors. I haven't used these in so long and they're a fancy watercolor set and it's been ages because I've only done little bits of watercolor here and there over this past year or so. So this is my first official full proper watercolor illustration in a very long time. But yeah, look at the torso of the woman there. You can already see blue there. I should have just filled her in, although actually no, I, I'm glad I didn't fill her in and you'll see why later. Because <laughs> luckily with watercolor, it's pretty forgiving. So I just took a paper towel and wet it a bit and rubbed the areas where I accidentally painted and most of it lift off, lifted off. So it was it was pretty okay. Here I'm using white gouache, please don't kill me. <laughs> I'm using it to lighten part of the water because again, I was referencing the Kiki's delivery service art and there was one section of the water that was lighter, presumably because sun was reflecting off of it. And so I was trying to mimic that. One thing I did not mimic is that the water was very solid in color. Well, there were variations in color, but there were not streaks in the water, but I wanted mine to have streaks in the water. So I changed it up a little bit. 
But yeah, I said the thing about the gouache because there are a lot of watercolor purists out there who think you have to leave the white of the paper showing through for anything that is white. It's like trying to draw without an eraser. Nope, you're not allowed to use an eraser. You can only use your pencil or whatever. Like that's what I equate it to. I'm just like, oh, come on. <laughs> If I want to use white gouache to bring back some white areas, I'm gonna do it. And gouache is in the same type of family as watercolor anyway. It can be diluted down to the point where it is almost like watercolors. So, you know, don't feel like a failure if you have to go in and add white to a watercolor painting or just use gouache in general for any color because mixed media is a thing. That's a thing. It's allowed. Ooh, also, I want to mention I loved working with this big brush here. I have another one you can see on the right hand side of the screen, although I didn't, I don't think I even ended up using that one, but I've been meaning to use bigger brushes for watercolor because I'm the kind of person who always goes in with small brushes and I thought, okay, I need to just use a big one and get in there with it. And I loved it. Even for things like these little trees and bushes here, I was using the big brush and I just had so much fun with it. And so I conquered my fear of the big brush. I actually really like these side views because the colors look a little more vibrant because with the top-down camera there's always a little bit of glare and so the colors look slightly slightly more washed out but when you see it from the side here you can see the vibrancy of the colors uh. also in the original drawing from Kiki's delivery service there was a town on the section of land that's out in the water it's probably some kind of peninsula or something just some little area that sticks out into the water but for mine, I thought it would be more, more rural. I picture this being people's vacation homes maybe. Maybe they live there year round, but it's by the water and they have docks there where they can dock their boats. And it's more, it's more of that feel, more of on the lake feel instead of city by the water. So moving on to the background, again, doing lots of blobbies with my big brush, just going to town, having a good time. <laughs> One thing I was trying to do is match the colors in the Kiki art because I wanted to keep the water and sky a pure blue. Don't mix other colors into it, just keep it pure like it is in the reference. And then same with all the greenery. I did notice that there were some yellow highlights in it, so I added that, but other than that, I just, I tried to keep it very pure. Then moving on to the tree, I'm adding in big blotches of color for the leaves. Again, really, really enjoyed this part. I decided to make the bark like a birch tree, but the foliage up top is not necessarily like a birch tree. I'm like Maybe it can pass as a birch tree, I don't know. But I did the leaves first and then later realized that's not really what a birch tree looks like, but I still think it looks kind of cool. For each little cluster of leaves, I made sure to just shade on the bottom and then add a bit of white highlight on the top. And I knew once I removed the masking fluid, I would go back in and add more. Because obviously some of the leaves are going to overlap the branches. I did the same thing in the foreground for the little bush. And yeah, it was looking cute. I, I was loving how it was looking at this point. <laughs> Stuff like this is where the big brush comes in handy because you can quickly do areas like trees without taking this tiny brush and trying to go in and add all the detail. Also this tree and having the character in the foreground is obviously different from that original image. There were some leaves hanging down in the Kiki art just visible at the top on the top left hand side but I decided to just put in a full tree again just to make mine different and I just I felt like it. <laughs> there are a bunch of speckles around the lady and the tree because uh, originally I was trying to do that look where the sun is coming through the trees and you can see the shadow of the leaves on the ground. <laughs> I forget what that's called. There's a term for it, but I, I was trying to do that and it did not look how I wanted it to. I probably should have used a reference for something like that. So, you know, power of reference. If you're trying to do something you've never drawn before, use reference. <laughs> I later smoothed that out. As you'll see, I, I, I nixed that idea. <laughs> Here I'm adding in the clouds, which honestly I should have masked out with the masking fluid first, but I didn't think of it, I guess. <laughs> and so I just went in with the white gouache to add in the clouds. They're mostly white on top with more of the blue showing on the bottom of the clouds. So now I'm removing the masking fluid. Okay, this was the worst thing ever. This masking fluid did not want to come off. So if you don't know, when it dries, it's it's rubbery. And 
it was not coming off. Normally it's pretty easy to lift off. You can kind of just rub it off. You're not supposed to use your fingers because then your oils get all over everything and you can actually rub some of the pigment off. But uh, so I was trying my best to not use my fingers as much as I could, even though my fingers weren't really helping. But I was trying every tool I had. I was using the end of a paintbrush because I had a flat end. I was using that purple scraper tool. I was even using this clay tool that has a rubber end because I thought rubber on rubber might help. I was using the eraser as you can see here. And for this house here, I'm showing the full process of me removing this stuff just to show you how much effort it took to get all of it off. I found that the be best method was to scrape off as much as I could, then go in with the eraser and it would form almost like this paste. And then I would scrape off as much of the paste as I could and then erase again, scrape, erase, scrape, and so on and so forth until it was all clean. And oh my gosh, I spent well over an hour removing all the masking fluid from this wretched thing. <laughs> okay, it's not a wretched piece of art. It's the fluid, the masking fluid, that's the wretched being. So that is why I'm glad I didn't completely fill in the woman and the tree with the masking fluid because that would have been even more of a nightmare to get rid of. So yeah, that was awful, super bad, not pleasant at all. I miss that Windsor and Newton stuff. I'm definitely gonna have to restock <laughs> that stuff. And now I'm getting started on the trees. And like I said before, I'm doing light birch type bark on this, which is why I masked it off in the first place. And while layers were drying, I would move on to other areas, just kind of jumping back and forth and working on the painting as much as I can. I switched to a smaller brush so I could get in some finer details on the docks and the houses, all that good stuff. In my drawing, the light is coming mainly from the right hand side. It was the opposite in the picture I was looking at, but yes, I made mine coming from the right. So I was trying to keep that in mind as I did the shadows for things like bushes and trees and as I shaded in the sides of the houses. Mm, another one of those luscious saturated side shots. Oh yeah. The Kiki art had little pops of this terracotta type of color for the buildings. And so I also used that as my pop of color since I was copying the color scheme for this. So I used a similar color on the docks and that little shed and then on the roofs of the houses. Also, can I just say, when I look at the background, like the far background where the mountains and stuff are, the hills, I should say, it looks like broccoli. That's what I think of when I look at the bushes in the background. I'm like, oh, broccoli? <laughs> I mean, broccoli pretty much just is little miniature trees, so, you know. Here I'm going in and finishing up the trees. I'm adding the stripes on the bark as well as those little eye-shaped bits and adding in some more leaves to overlap some of the branches. Now I'm coloring in the woman and I did not plan out her colors in advance. I really should have. This is why sometimes I will do a little digital mock-up where I quickly scribble in some color to figure out what the color scheme is gonna be because I was just winging it here. <laughs> I decided I didn't wanna introduce a new color into this and I wanted to use something already in the scene for the dress. So I thought, okay, it could be a blue, but maybe darker blue than the rest of the scene. So she pops. I was even maybe gonna do that terracotta kind of color. I decided to go with the blue, but for all the little details, I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I wanted the little lacy trim to stay white, but what about the bow thing? What about her sleeves? I was just winging it as I went. Not the best way to go about it, but it's what I did. <laughs> Like at first I thought the ribbon would stay white, then I thought, no, I'm gonna paint it that same cream color as her hat. And then I later changed my mind, I thought, no, I'm gonna make it black. And originally there weren't gonna be big loops on the bows, and then I thought, no, I'm gonna do the big loops at the top for the bow. <laughs> like there was not gonna be a bow, pretty much just tied ribbon. <laughs> and I just kept changing my mind. I colored her sleeves dark, like not the poofy part, but the part that is on her actual arm, like the more narrow part. 
I did that at first and then I changed my mind and I colored it in with white and I was just I was a little all over the place with that but in the end I liked the way it turned out <laughs> One thing though is I do wish I did a little mock-up where I did make her dress the terracotta color because that could have looked cute too. But I like how she almost blends in a little bit more because the focus is not necessarily on her. It's the scene as a whole. So if she was that color, she would pop a lot more. I don't know, it could still be cute. I added some gouache on the bushes and then peeled away the tape. I thought peeling off the masking fluid was gonna be this whole satisfying thing. No, it was torture and not satisfying to watch at all. But here we have some satisfying tape peeling. Mm, look at that crisp white edge. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it just looks so much better once you peel that off. So yes, that is the completed illustration, the painting. I did use a little bit of pencil here and there on the woman. While I don't think this is my strongest art piece ever, I had a lot of fun with it. It's just nice to do something different. I love drawing character focused art, but it was also nice to just relax, do a little scene. I was using watercolor, which I don't usually use, and yeah, just a nice little peaceful scene where the focus is on the background, not so much on a character. It was nice. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.